Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have an incredible guest with us today, our brother Laurent Muhammad, who's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. First of all, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Uh, yes, sir, Brother Laurent, this means a lot to myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, sir. Oh, it means a lot to me also, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My sister uh, Naima says, Assalamu alaikum, and my sister Miriam says, Ramadan Mubarak. Beautiful, Ramadan Please Kareem. return the greetings. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, sir. Ramadan Kareem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Brother Laurent, um, we've been friends on Facebook, and uh, you spoke, told me offline that you knew me as a child or saw me as a child. Um, yes, but when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? I first heard the teachings probably when I was a, a teenager, like a young teenager. I heard that uh, I heard the Nation of Islam mentioned on an Eric B. and Rakim song, and they said, "Peace to the Nation of Islam." I was in the ninth grade. I was fourteen years old, and I actually thought it was a nation. Mm. So I went to go. I went to school and looked for it on the map. <laughs> <laughs> mm, 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 because mm. uh that's how that's how green i was but when the rappers they they really planted the seed when they mentioned things i was always the type that never wanted to be you know i didn't, I wanted to know what they was talking about so you know that's how the seeds was planted eric bent rock him actually yes sir yes sir mm, okay great yes sir and once you accepted it why did you accept the teachings uh it just made sense to me when I first heard Minister Farrakhan, I heard it was blacks in government. He was talking about the uh, countdown to the year 2000. I was uh, visiting my grandparents in Omaha, Nebraska. That's my hometown, Omaha, Nebraska, where Malcolm X was born. And uh, he came on C-SPAN back then. And I was sitting there in the evening with my uncle and my grandfather. And my uncle got real excited. He said, there he is. He was talking to my grandfather. Like, daddy, 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 there he is. So that being my uncle, I look up to my uncle. I said, well, what is he getting excited for? And I hit, I sit there and I heard the minister speak and I was blown away the first time I heard it. And I was only like, like I said, 14 years old. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so from that, that, that really like, so it all made sense. So I was hearing it in the music a little bit, but now I'm seeing where it's coming from. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing the man. And uh, uh, so it just really made sense, everything I heard. And, and I was hearing little things like, uh, I, I got to say this, but I was hearing things like they were saying the white man is the devil. And I, I thought that that was true. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Even when I was young and I never really had a, 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 a real bad experience with white people, but I knew the history, you know what I'm saying? And so that just rang out with me. That was before I even heard the black man is God, but the white man is the devil has really stood out to me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All uh, praises due to Allah. And um, how did your family and friends feel about you accepting the teachings? Okay, I got a story to tell you. So, brother, I was, uh, I was like I said, I was getting into music, and uh, I hadn't had a relationship with my biological father. You know what I mean? I had moved back from Cincinnati, Ohio, to Omaha, to, like I said, my hometown. This is the 10th grade. Uh, my father contacted me when I moved back, and he said, uh, I'm a Muslim now. Mm. So I'm like, wow, I just was hearing a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I was hearing little things. And it, he could have been a he could have been a Sunni Muslim, but he was in the Nation of Islam. He had joined mm. the Nation of Islam in Denver, Colorado. He mm. came back to Omaha, which is our, our hometown, and he gave me message of the black man. And and brother, don't you know in the 10th grade, that's the only the first book that I ever read from cover to cover. So all my years through school, I struggled with reading. But I read Mr. the Black Man, and it opened me all the way up. Like, we hear stories about this all the time. Yes, sir. I bear witness, brother. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Beautiful. All praises be to Allah. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, so you're in, what was it like to be a Muslim in a town or in a, uh, just an environment uh, well, like, like Nebraska? Well, in Nebraska, it's not like what a lot of people think. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a black population there, and uh, for me, 
being, I was like really the only young brother for a long time. So I can relate to a, a, a lot of young, the youth in the nation of Islam. So I was like the only young brother. I got my ex three days after I turned 16. Mm. So I turned 16 on my birthday. Three days later, I recited to get my ex and I recited the student of Roman and actual facts. Mm. <laughs> and mm. so it was, uh, it was uh, you know, here's the thing, that environment, it was gang infested at this particular time. So my peers, you know, some of my peers was was claiming, you know, Crips and Bloods. And then we had a little bit of uh, gangster disciples, a little bit of vice lords. But I said, I claimed the nation almost like they claimed their set. Yes, you know sir, what I'm saying? Sir, so sir, I wore, and I said, now this, I, this is God, though. You know what I'm saying? So that's how uh, I approached it. So I, I really was, it really helped my self-esteem. It helped my confidence. I was a, I went out and wore my bow tie and sold papers on the corner and all of that in Omaha, Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we went to Lincoln. Now, there's not that many black people in Lincoln, but I think back on it and be like, wow, I was out there in the snow, in the cold, Selling the final call, you know what I'm saying? In a, in a, in a place like that, yes, sir. But the people back then, those times, it wasn't. A, what I've noticed uh, recently is like our people are being bombarded with different uh, bodies of knowledge that's out here. You know what I'm saying? So back then, it wasn't a lot. So they was receptive to the teachings. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, praise this to a lot. Beautiful. Yes, sir. And thank everyone who continues to watch, like, share, subscribe. I can't wait to put this on YouTube. And everybody on YouTube, um, please let us know what city you're from in the comments. Okay. Yes, sir. So, about Laurent. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Now you come in. Who, how was the training? How does that? How does that go? Like once you come in, like who trains you? How does that process okay. go? Okay. The training was. Uh, we was just a little study group, but then, like I told you, my father lived in Denver. Denver had a mosque. So I would go visit my father in the summertime and I would go to the mosque and, and I would go to FOI class. And uh, I can't remember right before I got registered, I was 15 years old and uh, Dr. Collett, he was speaking up in Denver at a, at a university. I didn't know who he was. The only person I knew about was Minister Farrakhan and the most mm -hmm. honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So when I met uh, Dr. Collett, I was 15 and I was, I was green. I hadn't even been to no real classes. And, uh, uh, I was to salute him and I gave him a broken salute <laughs> and he went off on me. He said, where's the captain at? Where the lieutenant at? You know what I'm saying? Well, you don't salute like that. I was only 15 years old. You know what I'm saying? But I loved it though. I still loved it. You know what I'm saying? I love how he responded. And I remember to this day. And uh, so now I know, you know what I mean? I, I see how you, I see how you, uh, your posture, your demeanor, I see how you drill. And it's that's the answer. spirit. That's the spirit that I try to uh, give to the brothers here in Cincinnati. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, praise to Allah. Yes, sir. And that's wonderful that you got to meet Dr. Collard at 15. Okay. Yes, sir. How do you get to Cincinnati? Cincinnati. Well, I was uh, after I, after I graduated high school in Omaha, and I went to barber school in Omaha, and uh, I I had family in Denver, I had family in Las Vegas. But my heart always was in Cincinnati where I had went from grade school all the way up to the ninth grade. And so I knew that Cincinnati, our mosque is mosque number five. And so I said, they got some history there. You know what I'm saying? So at a youth, I said, I'm going to go back to Cincinnati and, you know, I'm going to join the mosque up there. I'm sure to get some good training up there. You know what I'm saying? So yes, that's sir. how I moved back. You know what I mean? Plus I had like, like I said, I had friends, not really family, but I have friends. You know what I'm saying? And I would see some of the brothers from Cincinnati at Savior's Day, you know what I mean? And I just sit back and I just watch them like, okay, that's who I'll probably be working with, you know what I mean? And so that's how I just moved back on my own, on my own. Yes, sir. Young man, too. Yeah. Wasn't afraid, though. That's what the nation did for me. It removed that fear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All oh, praise due to a lot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I saw a picture of you with, um, that you posted about, uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Ben Chavis, the May Man March, leading up to that, what was the climate like in Cincinnati and how did it personally impact you, the May Man March? Uh, the climate was uh, it was really high. We had a lot of young brothers in the ranks around my age. We talk about early 20s. The brothers was out on the field, real heavy. Uh, you know, you got brother uh, uh, Tadar up in uh, Chicago was 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 making us go up on papers <laughs> so we was like at uh 
I want to say like 5,000 issues, but this is when it was uh, every two weeks. You know what I'm saying? And so we had uh, Cleveland was really, they was rolling real tough. We had, they had, they had brothers in their ranks that were selling a thousand an issue. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they got honored at Savers Day one year. You know what I mean? Got their holy name and everything. So they was real, rolling real tough at that, around that time. You know, before the Million Man March, it's like, I, like I, uh, like I like to think it was like, the, it was the height of, of of consciousness to me, you know what I mean, mm. and that was that was like the uh, culmination of, of of you know consciousness in 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 our environments, in the, you know what I'm saying in these different cities and stuff like that, and so uh, the Million Man March really impacted me because you know uh, I, I used to rap too. Mm, okay, so I'm okay. Big, I'm, I'm big into the culture like you. I I, I see your background. Yes, sir, and, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So I used to rap, and I came out with my first tape. Just before CDs, it was a tape. <laughs> and yes, I did my first tape being inspired by, you know, all the independent artists, uh, being inspired by a group that's out of Indianapolis. Uh, they was called X Niggas. Yes, sir, yes, sir. You know what sir. I'm saying? So I was inspired by them, inspired by all the conscious rappers, you know, Ice Cube, Paris, you know, all the East Coast rappers, the 5% rappers, all of them. And I said, I'm going to do my own, but it was going to be straight nation, soldier music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I got a good response up there. You know what I mean? Uh, I had got a booth, but I wasn't able to uh, work my booth uh, because I had to be on post. And so I was on post uh, at the minister's hotel. Mm -hmm. I was on post outside of his room. You know what I'm saying? I seen the minister when he came back. Mm -hmm. I wasn't on the ball at that at, at the time. But I seen him when he came back, he walked right by me. It was a beautiful experience. But uh, how it impacted me is how the nation period has impacted me. You know, the Million Man March, it, tell me, it tells us to come back and take charge. You know what I'm saying? Take back our community. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 su support and love and honor our family. Be a family man. Open up businesses. Join organizations. You know what I'm saying? Atone with one another. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, you know, I try to embody all of those things, uh, uh, you know, because uh, in, in, in around it, when we uh, had an anniversary, I always like to go back and listen to the minister and listen to and listen, uh, the pledge. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So it really impacted me, brother. It really has. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Oh, praise you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, um, I want to speak about fear. Right, yes, being sir. from Oklahoma, from Nebraska yeah. to Cincinnati. Have you ever been faced with fear? And if so, how did you overcome that fear? Yes, sir. Um, well, uh, of course we'd be faced with fear, but my mother always told me, said, she said, uh, it's nothing to fear but fear itself, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, and it teaches it in the Holy Quran, it tells us, you know what I'm saying? Fear no one but Allah, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, me becoming a Muslim at a young age, it really helped with my development far as with fear and uh, uh, like I said, self-esteem and, you know, just going to our, to our class, our FOI class, you know, just uh, some of the basic things about holding our head up, pulling our stomach in, sticking our chest out, you know what I'm saying, and, and sounding off, you know what I mean? That did so much for me, you know what I'm saying? So I've never been in a situation where, um, you know, like a gun being drawn on me or, or anything like that. Uh, I really have been blessed to not have to face those types of things. But I imagine that I would man up, basically. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, praise you to a lot. Okay. Yes, sir. What has been your greatest trial and how have you been able to overcome your, your greatest trial? Uh, my greatest trial probably has been my marriage. Mm, mm. You know, I got married the same year of the Million Man March, 1995. You know what I mean? I was, and I was a young man. I was only 20 years old. So that has been a, a tremendous trial on me. You know what I mean? To uh, get married young and um, uh, not really know what you're really getting into. You know what I'm saying? You really don't have a true understanding. And we didn't have what established like far as like the proper courtship and all of that things, like how it is today. You know what I'm saying? So that has been, and that's an ongoing trial, brother. That's an ongoing trial. You know what I mean? But I've been, uh, uh, I have remained in my marriage. Yes, sir. I have been separated. And it seemed like, um, 
my marriage and my life in a nation has kind of like parallel. And it tells us that in the study guides, you know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So, so, you know, like I haven't always been active in a nation. You see what I'm saying? But I, all, my, I know where my heart was. Yes, I know sir, the, yes, nation, the nation is, is, is home for me. You know what I mean? I work better within the nation, not outside the nation. You know what I'm saying? This is best for me. So with my marriage, that's been my, my, my hardest trial, brother. And I'm still going through that. <laughs> yes, sir. Through a lot. Yes, sir. Well, what yes, advice sir. would you give to future husbands? For future husbands, I would say, uh, of course, you want to be, uh, uh, you have to have some things in common. You have to have, uh, uh, and, and what I leaned on was that we was both believers. But you got to be active believers. See what I'm saying? And you got to also remember your duty to Allah both people you know what i mean and then you have to uh, be a partnership be a team have some things that you can do uh as uh, far as like maybe business wise you know what i'm saying to help strengthen your marriage you know what i'm saying uh stay active in the nation you know because that's going to keep you your mind right <laughs> yes, don't sir. don't fall out don't fall out because if you fall out then you're going to you're going to veer off. You know what I'm saying? So you got to stay, like the minister said, if you want to get strong, you got to hang around strength. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, brother, but I would advise everyone. Uh, uh, I used to think like I shouldn't have got married so young. Then I heard recently, not too long ago, Dr. Aline has said something about, well, when you get married young, it, it prevents you from doing all that foolishness. Mm, mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? And I could have got caught up. Our, our environment it was a lot of foolishness going on. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. A lot of temptation, a lot of things that take you off, off this course. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful. All praise due to a lot. Yes, sir. What about father, uh, future fathers? What advice would you give to future fathers? Uh, future father is uh, what I've learned here recently is that, you know, uh, you father, your parent different as you get older. So as I'm older, I learned to have patience. So even if you're young, have patience with your children. Invest in your children. They are your, your number one asset. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And uh, uh, feed, feed their, you know, really find out, like we talked, we find out their gifts and just feed them, flood them with, the, with, with, with whatever they are into. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, uh, like I have three children. I have a son and two daughters. You know what I mean? And so with my son, there's a gap between my son and my daughters. So now I got daughters, which is, that's, that's a whole different way of parenting also. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And so, but, but with, my, with my son, I was very impatient. You know what I'm saying? But with my daughters, I learned to have patience. And I had learned to really sit back and, and figure out what they're into and to try to help bring out uh, uh, their fullest potential. Because that's what we got to do. We got to pull. You know what I mean? You got you to learn from... Uh, Richard Williams. You gotta learn from uh Tiger Woods daddy. Yes, sir. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes, you gotta sir. learn from you gotta learn from Michael Jackson daddy. You know yes, what I'm sir. saying? Yes sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. uh, and thank everybody who continues to watch. We have a quick 60 second commercial break, uh, brother Ron, for all yes, of sir. the sponsors of the People's Podcast this month. Uh during the month of Ramadan. We thank every every sponsor, every uh we get a lot of people who give anonymous donations on you from YouTube, from Facebook. From Instagram, we are grateful for everyone. If you'd like to be a sponsor, please cash at uh, the People's Podcast. We greatly appreciate it. My brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera, a drone. He does television and film editing. Also, my sister Miriam's book, ABC I Love Me, children's book and coloring book, uh, both available on Amazon. She just released a book in Spanish as well. Please make sure you get that. Um, my sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country and right here in the studio in Atlanta, Georgia. We love our tiny dancers. Rock Communications. If you're working on a book and you need copy editing, project management, content development, or media relations, please reach out to Rock Communications. Fashion Guides out of St. Louis, Missouri for young men and boys, 314-329-6009. He'll keep you uh, dressed and, and dripping in the best of fashion. Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad, conflict mediation out of Austin, Texas, squashing the beef throughout the Southwest region. He does a phenomenal job. His wife, Sister Fudia Muhammad, children of the Most High, giving birth to a God in the science of child rearing. 
Uh, Sister Sherry Muhammad, AsiaticMinds.com. She teaches uh, uh, STEM virtually young kings and queens, AsiaticMinds.com. Please sign your children up for the Kenneth Bowtie Maker Extraordinaire. He'll ship bow ties to you anywhere in the country. Dr. Henry M. Carter, King Henry's Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia, for the Rashad Muhammad of Chicago COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdulsharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are available on Amazon. All right. Thank you all very much. Right back to our yes, brother, sir. brother Ron. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Brother Ron, I, my, the other question I wanted to ask you is speaking of Ramadan, what are some of the things that uh, you do to keep your spirit up during Ramadan? Um, well, the, the fast is, you know, that's so dominant. And um, I was really looking forward to this fast because it's really like a, a restart for us. You know, I, 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 I blew up to be the heaviest that I ever been in my life. Mm. So I was looking for, you know, this Ramadan to really get control of my diet and uh, my health and, uh, um, you know, try to lower my blood pressure. You know, I'm trying to, you know, get off those pills, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, be a stay on top of my reading, stay on top of my prayer. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Just, yes, stay, sir. just stay in the spirit, brother. Just stay in the spirit. Yes, Great. sir. So, uh, yes, sir. Beautiful. If people are showing you love. Thank you, everybody, for continuing to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, my sister name is, uh, says, Great advice, uh, Brother LeBron. Be beautiful. Thank you. Uh, brother Ron, I had to ask you uh, did the, did the minister ever go coming to the city of Cincinnati? Would yes, sir. Know? Yes, sir. He came to Cincinnati uh, in 1997. And I was I was uh, fortunate to uh, work with the E team, mm. so I was rolling around with them brothers and stuff like that. Uh, that I cut brother Mustafa hair yes, in the sir. hotel room, uh, and so um, the supreme captain, excuse me, yes sir, uh, student supreme captain Mustafa, hair, I cut his hair. Uh, Minister Farcon, he walked in on me while I was cutting his hair. He said, "Yeah, I might let you trim me up a little later." You know what I mean? And he did his hair like that. And then I was telling him, like, uh, I wanted to shake his hand, but I was cutting hair, so I didn't shake his hand. But I was, like, you know, so so blown away. And uh, and, I, and I But I did tell him, I said, I was thinking about moving to Chicago. And he had told me, he said, well, move to Chicago, and we're going to build a shop around you, young brother. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I should have moved out on that, but I didn't move out on it, brother. But yes, sir. So, yes, sir, the minister has been here. Uh, like I said, like back in 1997, it was a beautiful day too, brother. Beautiful experience. Beautiful yes, experience. Yes, sir. This what I this what I wanted to say because I was just one, I was thinking that Savers Day. I was thinking like uh, I wish that you know how the minister used to be on tour, and when, when he go on tour, you know brothers from all over would come around, and this is how we build camaraderie. And I said, I missed that. I said, I wish we could have something like that going on today. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where we go in, we go in and take over a city. You know what I mean? We lock the city down. You know what I'm saying? And we out with the brothers and the brothers is building. Oh, that's a beautiful thing, brother. I miss them days. Yes, sir. Beautiful. All praises to a lot. That's wonderful. Okay, now I know that you are in the uh you reside in the home of the orange, black, and white that my mother was singing about this Wilfro <laughs> Tigers and Wilberforce University and yes, the Ohio State and all of these things <laughs> of Cincinnati. Yeah. Uh, what, what type of music do you, uh, when well, you said you're um, a fan of hip hop, what, what would you say is your favorite album of all time? Whoa, my favorite album of all time? Mm, that's a good one of all time. I don't have one particular favorite album of all time. But a lot of those albums that you got in the background, I rock with. You know what okay, I mean? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So you got your little, you got Lil Wayne. Yes, sir, you got yes, the sir. Kanye, I see. Yes, sir, you know yes, what sir. I'm saying? I'm, you got Music Soul Child. That's not rap, but I, I love that album. <laughs> uh, 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 let's see who else I'm trying to see. But yeah, brother, you know, like Lauren Hill. You know what yes, I mean? Uh, I go back to uh, Big Daddy Kane. Okay, he was a big okay. influence on me. Big Daddy Kane, Eric B. And Rock him. Uh, Brand Nubians. Paris, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Ice Cube, when he was with NWA and when he went solo, you know what I'm saying? Yes, uh, uh, I like Snoop. I like Dre. I'm, I'm big on a, a lot of the underdogs. So I'm 47 years old and, and a lot of people in, from my generation, you know, their favorite would be Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like Jay-Z. I like Jay-Z. I was more of a, a Nas fan. 
Okay. But yeah. Jay Z definitely he he got it. But I'm be, I'm more into like uh, I like Snoop. You know what I'm saying? I like Tupac. You know what I mean? But when I was young, I was kind of East Coast head. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I had I had leaders of the new school. I had Tribe Called Quest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I can go I can go deep with this the rap the rap music. We yes, can get sir. deep with that. Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay, great. Now, what is there to do for fun in Cincinnati for people? Because I always try to tell people like, no, that's where I'm born. And I mean, I know about Cedar Point and uh, uh, which is like, you know, like 45 minutes or an hour, I guess, away from Cincinnati, but Kings Island. But what is, what is there for, for fun that people should do outside of the jazz fest in Cincinnati? Uh, well, Cincinnati, they, they're trying to become a little bit more progressive. You okay. know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, the, the biggest downer I, I've experienced here recently is the weather. I didn't know how dreary the weather can mm. be around here. But when the weather's good, we have nice parks. You do have, we do have Kings Island. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more. Uh, if you into the, you know, doing the con- like, you got a, a big concert tonight. We got Rick Ross, okay, who's a friend okay. of the nation, and Gucci yeah. Man and Jeezy. And they all gonna be here tonight. You know what I'm saying? If you are into that, you know what I'm saying. Of course, you got, you know, you got your Bengals. You know, you see what they did. I'm, I'm yes, really man. not a, a Bengal fan, as far as, as far as the organization. I like uh, uh uh I like the team. I, I've been wanting to talk to you too about because I know you you're a big uh 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 what's the Tom Brady fan. I was like, <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You and brother uh Willie Muhammad. I said, what's wrong with these brothers? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, so you know you got the you got the Bengals, you got the Reds, but you know we're not into baseball like we used to be like in the '80s. The '80s. Blacks used to be real big, and black people used to be big into baseball. You know, black boys and men. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, you know what I'm saying? So that's not really a thing, but it, it's it's things to do. You know, we got we got a lot of. Let me say this, brother. We have a lot of uh, black people, entrepreneurs, young, mm. uh, uh, young men and young women, black black men and women that's opening up a lot of businesses around here. You know what I'm saying? A lot of restaurants, and the and their palate has changed. So it's not like you know, fried chicken, macaroni, cheese, and greens no more. You know what I'm saying? They serving the uh, lamb chops and, and mm. salmon and different things like that, more healthier. So, you know, we as, as uh, Moss Number 5, we don't have a restaurant. And I've been trying to, I'm trying to push the, our believers to, we got to do something. We got to yeah. get a restaurant because our people have took our message and almost passed us up with it, brother. You know what I'm saying? They moving out on it. You know what I mean? That's one thing about the youth I love. They move out on it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Praise be to a lot. Yes, sir. Speaking of Cincinnati, there was a brother uh, who he got uh, he was shot like two years ago. Uh, okay. He was murdered from Cincinnati. Um, the brother uh, he changed his name, but he was F O Y. But he got murdered in Cincinnati like two years ago. Uh, I can't forget his uh, his name slipping my mind. Brother Hassan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But man, a lot of man. Yeah, man. He uh. Yeah. He was a soldier, man. Shout, I mean, I, every time I used to come to Cincinnati, you know, almost every summer. So it was a shout out to all of the you know, believers uh, holding it down mm-hmm. in Miles number five, man, holding it down. And shout out to my family in Cincinnati as well. Yes, okay. Sir. My next question for you, sir, is what do you, what do you want your legacy to be? Oh, man, that's a deep question. My legacy, I want my legacy to, uh, uh, I have a kind of like a big idea, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really want us to, get a school going, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I want to be a part of that. And, uh, and I just want to move, I just want us to get more business oriented, you know what I'm saying? But me, you know, I've been, I have my barbershop since 1999, you know what I'm saying? So that's part of my legacy, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and if, if, if you come to me for a service, I want to make sure that I give you top notch service. We just recently lost another brother, uh, mm-hmm. brother Sweet Pea. Mm-hmm. He had a barbershop down on Elm Street. He's an elder, and he, uh, your, 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 your uncle know him. Your, your father know him also. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Matter of fact, matter of fact, uh, Minister Farcon even stayed with him before mm-hmm. coming to the city. You know what I'm saying? And we just re- may a lot be pleased with him. Mm-hmm. This was probably about two weeks ago, and and the brother Jamil was here, brother James Muhammad, the. Uh, uh, editor or the final call you yes, 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 they yes, all yes, came yes. back to pay homage to this brother you know what i'm saying yes, so if, if if i can if i can do just a little bit of what he's done you know what i'm saying 
uh, uh, I would be pleased, you know what I'm saying? But, but I want my, you know, my children to be successful. You know what I mean? Uh, I have my bar, my son's in barber school. He finished it up. So, you know, he's, uh, you know, your, your family really personify what this nation of Islam is all about, brother. You know what I'm saying? So I look to your family and I'm really inspired, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's, you know, and I'm, and I'm really, I'm really impressed by you because you, you're heavy into the arts. And I like that, brother. I like that, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I first, when I, like I said, when I first seen you when you was a child, you was playing the Game Boy. That just always, <laughs> I always remembered that. <laughs> yes, sir. All praises due to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, both of my sisters say all praises due to Allah. And and that's and congratulations on your son carrying on the legacy of, of doing for self and yes, having a barbershop and things of that nature, man. We need more of that in the community. Um well, I want to thank you. I want to um, both of my sisters say all praises to Allah and thank you for coming on, taking time out of the People's Podcast. Yes, and, sir. and my sister uh, Mimi said, Josh and that Game Boy. Thank you, Mimi. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes, See, sir. this is real talk. See, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. But you know, shout, but it just talking to you makes me smile because it makes me think about Cincinnati and it makes me think about not just Kings Island, but uh, the bakery that I used to go to, Buskins Bakery. And uh, yes, sir. Um, and uh, Fish's big boy and uh, that's right, that's right. Uh, La Rosa's and all you know. I'm saying, I know right. about his name. I know a little that's bit. Right, that's right. So now you see that, that spirit that you. That's what made me come back to Cincinnati because I used to have them childhood memories. Also, and I said I'm gonna go back. You know what I'm saying? So you know, hindsight 2020. I maybe I say maybe I should have went to uh, Chicago, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I could have went to Vegas. Yes, but, sir, you know, I, I have carved out a nice quality of life here. You know what I'm saying? So all praise is due to Allah for that. We still got some work to do in, in our mosque. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but uh, I'm game. I'm game. I'm ready for it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, well, I want to thank you for your sacrifice on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast for your sacrifice, Brother Ron, and the sacrifices of your family. We thank Allah for you uh, much. And uh, man, this has been an honor that you come on the People's Podcast. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Much love. Yes, sir. Salute, salute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.